Good morning and welcome to Peace Out, our devotional where we continually learn how to peace out, right? And just trust God for the outcome, trust Him for to give us wisdom, to trust us to just be our God, really, and trust Him for peace in the middle of whatever's going on. And this is a crazy, crazy world, I'll tell you that. It is... It is Man, there's stuff I never thought I would see in my lifetime, right? It's just crazy. We're overloaded with information and and technology and just stuff. And sometimes it's hard to just find that quiet place, right? And this morning I was I was uh, drinking my coffee, of course, because that's what I do first thing in the morning, every single morning. And uh, my brain was just running with all these things. I mean, you know, I got a I got a busy day. I'm gonna take Chris to get a haircut. Yay! Trim up that little beard and hopefully keep it. So then I gotta do this and do that and and this project and that. And I gotta need to do this. And I need to do that. Oh, and I gotta check that. My brain and I was like, whoa! Can you just reel that all in for a minute, right? My brain was just all over all these little elements that make up my story. And I'm not going to give you all the details because I know that you've got all those elements that make up your story too, right? But there is, there's there's so many, relate. and really if you think about it, we have all these different, I'm going to say relationships, we have relationships with people, of course, that's, that's number one, and because that's going to last, because people are going to be in eternity, but all our other stuff, our money, our houses, all that stuff, when we die, well, they ain't going to be there, but our friends, if we're saved, we're all going to be in heaven together someday, right? So we're going to have, so people last forever. All this other stuff doesn't really matter, right? But we have a relationship with food. Yeah, I have too much of a relationship with food right this minute. I'm working on tailoring that relationship, right? We have relationships with, with our money, how we spend, how what we spend it on. You can do emotional spending, emotional eating. You know, things can get out of balance so easy in that area. And either of those areas in food and, and money. We have relationships with people, of course. Uh, you know, we have relationships with... And those relationships can be broad, right? We have people that are we just met. Uh, we have, like, I have my neighbors. I wouldn't call them my friends. Hope that doesn't hurt their feelings, not like they watch. But I have a certain surface relationship with them, and I want to, I'm a part of this community in our complex, you know, so I talk to my neighbors. And then I have friends that are, I have, that I love to hang out with and, and love to chill with and talk with and, and do things with, right? And then I have really, and then I have really close friends like my buddy Ginger. We've been friends for, goodness, almost 60 years, not quite. We still got about four more years before we get hit that 60, but we've been friends for 56 years, right? And yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Fifty, I think fifty-five years, you know. And so uh, there's all these different elements and different different pieces to all these different puzzles, and all these puzzles have to come together in some way to create our lives, and and in some way to create our stories. And so we have all these different, and and each of those elements can just be can present so many complexities just in itself relationships with people our finances our jobs our 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 kids our family our our just our lives our hobbies what we like to do what we don't like to do all these things what we like to eat don't like to eat all these all of these little each element has its own set of complexities that we have to work through and that's why our brain starts go, my brain was going whoo through all these things this morning and I went whoa I need to just reel this in, right? And so I thought, you know what? There is a place for my soul to go. I don't have to live on, in overwhelm. I can stop. No matter where I am, no matter what's going on, there's a place for my soul to go. My soul can, my, my, my mind, my will, and my emotions can be so vulnerable, right? To just, uh, to a volatile environment in this world, right? And it, I can just feel so vulnerable and just so out of control, but I have a place. And so I, that took me right straight to Psalm 46, which we've talked about here plenty of times, but it starts out saying, God is our refuge. I have a place to go. And he's he doesn't just say, hey, save me for the big stuff. Go handle it on your own. <laughs> you know, he doesn't say, oh, no, your list is too long or too complicated or your life is too messed up or wait until it's a bigger problem. No, he's a refuge and there's no stipulation on that. My soul has a place 
to go. And just knowing that I had a place to put all of that this morning, a place to go, hey, God, <laughs> you see all these complexities, you see all these situations, you see all these questions, you see all these fears. I'm honest with God. I'm like, God, I'm just really kind of afraid about this right here. I have a place my soul can go. And he doesn't ever say, come back tomorrow. Oh, I'm off today. <laughs> right? I, I would, my One of my friends tried to call yesterday and I keep my phone on um, on do not disturb until nine. And that gives me time to finish the devotion and gives me time to finish my, my blog for my devotions for caregivers and just get myself together. And then at nine, man, that, and the day is, goes full force from there. And then my phone usually goes right at nine o'clock with all these notifications that piled up from about six o'clock or so till then right and she tried to call and I was like I'm so sorry it's supposed to let my contacts come through but it didn't but I'm and my point is God doesn't ever put that he doesn't he doesn't have a hold my messages right he doesn't say just send it to voicemail he doesn't say, you know, I, I can't, I'm on do not disturb until such and such a time, right? He's always there. I have a place I can go. And so that's what I did this morning. I just sat for a minute and went, okay, God, I'm just going to turn all this off for a second and just remind myself that God is my refuge. He's my strength. Psalm 46, one. he's a very present help in trouble and it doesn't just say big trouble or just little trouble or in between trouble he is my very present help he's right here wherever i need him Where, wherever and whenever i need him he's right here he's got me and i just reminded myself of that because if you read down through this psalm down in verse 10 then it says be still and know that i am god and the coolest one of the coolest things about this psalm is it starts out in third person right god is our refuge he is our strength he's a very present help in time of trouble it goes on down says the lord of hosts is with us that's enough to to bring us that peace sometimes just knowing god's got our backs and knowing that he's just with us he's not going to go oh too complicated for me no he's got us right the god of jacob is our refuge it was like the psalmist um uh, this is the song, the sons of Korah, actually. It's like the psalmist were, were saying, just reminding themselves that God's got us. He's with us. And then it goes on down, then it says in verse 10, be still and know that I am God. It was like God spoke in the middle of their crisis. And right in the middle of it, because they're going, God's our refuge. God is our strength. God is our help. He's going to help us at the break of dawn. He's go, He's God is with us. And then just out of nowhere, it says, be still and know that I am God. It switched to first person. Isn't that weird? Don't you notice little interesting things like that? And he, so it's like, and then they went back to say, the Lord of God, the Lord God, the Lord of hosts is with us. God, the God of Jacob is our refuge. And so it's like just right in the middle of their ponderings, of their thought process, of their, of their meditations in the middle of saying, you know, God is our help. You know, I don't know what they were going through. I know that the sons of Korah, went through some stuff if you look back at exodus right i don't know what they were going through when they were writing this when they they wrote this and they were like god is our refuge and, and he's our help and he's gonna he's gonna be he is with us and then right in the middle god spoke be still and know i am god that's powerful and when he when you when you get your soul quiet and you take your soul to him as a refuge and you go okay god i got all this going on and i don't this is where i was this morning i got all this going on and i really don't know what to do can i just give this to you and he just he just takes it and goes just know i'm god just know i've got you just know i've given you peace just know nothing can overtake you it does it's not even death because in death what happens we don't have to fear death why because when we die this body just falls off and we're just with him we have nothing to fear what you know what can what what can man do to us when god is our refuge so i just reminded myself today i reeled in all those thoughts because they were crazy and all over the place I reeled in all those thoughts I just reminded myself that god is with me god has me and no matter what all these details are in my story I still have a place to go. There's a place for my soul to go. God is my refuge. And all I have to do is just stop for a second, be still, take that peace, and just know that 
he's still God. No matter what's going on or no matter what's not going on <laughs> that we need to go on, God is still our refuge. There's a place for our soul to go where we can be refreshed in the middle of the storm, where we can be we can be fulfilled in the middle of a battle, where we can be full of peace in the middle of, of a, a world that's in turmoil, because God is our refuge. And all we have to do is be still and know that he's God. I encourage you today, just stop for a minute. Just stop for a second and go, okay, God, I see all these story elements. I know you see all my thoughts. And I just need a place for my soul to go where I can experience that peace. And I promise you, he will meet you there. And he will be your peace. So you can just peace out, right? Peace out. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow.